What's up guys, so I finally found something I cannot stand on the 22 Pro. It is the sag when you're towing or hauling anything with a decent amount of weight. First time I hooked my boat up to this thing, I, it was immediate, um, you know, immediately apparent that I had to do something with the sag. I'm gonna put a picture on your screen to show you what I'm talking about, but it is brutal. Cannot stand it. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate bags. These are the Ultimate. They have the Jount bumper internal inside the bags. We'll cover and talk about that a little bit more as we're doing the install. And then we're also gonna be adding the Airlift Wireless One onboard compressor. These bags are new to me. I've never ran them before. On the 2020 Platinum, we had the Firestones, but I do hear awesome reviews about these bags here, and I love the fact that they have that internal jounce, which again, we'll cover. This um, I did have on my 2020 Platinum paired with the Firestone bags, and I love it. You can adjust your pressure on the fly. It's just awesome for adjusting your ride to, to get it not only get the truck level, but to get a, the most comfortable ride possible when you're towing. So what we're gonna do here, this video, I'm actually only gonna do the bags. Make sure you're subscribed, turn on that notification bell because we're gonna do the compressor on a different video. The only reason I'm doing that is not everybody is gonna wanna run the wireless compressor. So I'm gonna do the bags in one video, just in case you don't want the onboard compressor, then we'll circle back, we'll do another video on this. Um, it's gonna be coming out right after this video here, but just so you know what we're gonna be covering today, only the bags in this video, let's jump right into it. So before we do anything on the truck itself, let's go ahead and get our bags assembled here as much as we can. So as you can see, it says airlift right here. Hopefully you can see, cause it's in black. I'm not sure if it's gonna turn out, but you'll see it when you're holding it. 5813 are the numbers on the bottom. Make sure that's in the correct orientation, right side up. So when you're looking at the top, you're gonna to take one of your air valves here. And when you're looking at it in this orientation, it's gonna screw into this spot here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make it finger tight. Just make sure you don't cross thread. So just start by your finger or by, with hand, make it finger tight. And then using um, a one half inch wrench, we're gonna go ahead and make it, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do one and a half turns with um, once you're finger tight. So we're one and a half turns with a half inch. So there's one and a half. Once you have your air valve on there, you're gonna take one of your roll plates. All four are identical. You're gonna put it on in this orientation. You can see how I'm holding it. It's gonna go over just like this. It's gonna line up over your air valve. These two holes are gonna line up. Then you're gonna take one of your plates that look like this. And what you wanna do, um, you're gonna mirror the other one, but let's just focus on this bag first and then I'll show you what I mean. So what you're gonna do is, you can see how the, the bag is sitting here and what orientation it's in. Take it, this plate here where it has this cutout right here. You want it on the opposite side of your air valve. So just, or I'm sorry, actually before we do that, we're gonna take two of the one inch carriage bolts. You get eight of those, just so you know what hardware we're dealing with, eight of these. You're gonna take two of them and put them in these holes here, okay? So you can see where I have them, all right? So now we're gonna take this plate and put it over, line up, your holes so you can see you can see these holes line up down right into the bag okay so then we're going to take two of the button head screws now you get two different types of these button head screws the shorter fatter ones you get eight of those you also get four taller skinny ones set those aside we're going to be dealing with the shorter fatter ones for right now take two of these and it's a 5.5 millimeter allen head or Allen wrench is what you're gonna to need to tighten them. So just get your holes lined up and secure these down to, I believe the spec, and again, I'll, I'll verify and put this on the screen for you. 20 foot pounds of torque is what you wanna tighten these down to, these two button heads. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down to 20 foot pounds of torque. And then I'll show you what I mean by you wanna mirror it on the other bag. So what I mean by mirroring is, here's the bag we just did. Again, air valve, cutout back here. So on this bag, you're gonna put a base plate, or I'm sorry, a roll plate over just like we did. Take two more of the one inch carriage bolts, put them through the same holes, or actually, put them through the same holes here. Now, what I mean by mirroring is when we put this one on the other bag, you can see how so we have our, our air valves here in the front. 
On this bag, the cutouts in the upper left corner. On this bag, the cutouts in the upper right. Okay, make sure you do that. That's gonna, uh, you're gonna need to do that when we get into installing on the truck. So I'm just gonna take two more of the shorter, fatter button head screws. Same thing, tighten these down to this bag here and we'll move on to the next step. So there's how your two bags should look when you're done with this step. Next up, we wanna take our bottom plates that look like this. You wanna have them facing in this orientation so you can see how this has um, tabs on it. Flip it over so those tabs are facing down. Take two of your longer carriage bolts, secure them in those spots. Take another roll plate and on the bottom of the spring, there are obviously those, I'm, I'm sorry, on the bottom of the bag, there's obviously no air valve on the bottom, but you still wanna put, there's a little cutout here in the sticker, put, put it on in this orientation like this. Okay, so you can see what I mean there, how you want it to sit. You can see that little cutout in the sticker, have it going on like that. And now we can flip this over and what you wanna do is these, the tabs that I showed you, you want those facing away from this bigger hole. So if you, if you looked at the top of this, this is kind of, this is on the same side as the air valve on the top. All right, place it over here like this. And I'll show you what I mean once I get this put together, it'll make more sense. And then we're gonna take two more of those shorter, fatter, um, button head screws that are 5.5 millimeter Allen wrench and secure to the bag like so. Same thing, 20 foot pounds of torque on these. Just get it all lined up and I'll give you a better look at how this should look when it's all put together. Okay, so here's what I meant. So the, the tabs here, you want to be facing the same way as this cutout, okay? So you can see our air valve if you flip it over, that circle cut out of the sticker would be right here. You want those tabs on the same side of this cutout. We're gonna go ahead and repeat the process for the other bag. So we're gonna flip it over, put the plate on. So again, that cut out in the sticker, you can see it's on the same side as the air valve. Take our other two long carriage bolts. Flip it over, make sure the tabs are facing away from, or uh, towards the back, away from the cutout of the sticker. Line it up, secure it with the last two 5.5 millimeter button heads. All right, let's move on over to the truck. All I've done off camera just to save some time is I did remove the two rear wheels just to make give you guys a better view. I would recommend taking them off anyway. Obviously, it's just gonna make it a lot easier on you. And what I did is I jacked it up and you can see I have the frame supported with two jack stands. And then I have one of my bottle jacks underneath the pumpkin. And the reason for that is you may, I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but just from what I've seen in the past, we might have to lower the pumpkin a little bit with the jack um, just to give us a little more room. We'll see how that goes as we go throughout the install, but that's all I've done off camera. Um, so first thing we're gonna do once we are at this point, we're gonna go ahead and remove the factory bump stops. So this piece right here, we're on the driver's side right now, only held in by three bolts, they're 12 millimeter, one here, one here, and one here. You can see I already have them loosened just to save time. So this is the driver's side. Go ahead and take this off and we'll head over to the passenger. Passenger side, same thing. Bump stop is right here, same three bolts there, two up underneath. But we also have to loosen these two here and remove this module here. We're gonna take those two 12 millimeter bolts out and just kind of tuck this module up out of the way for right now. We're back on the driver's side. You can see the orientation we're in. Bump stop was screwed in right there. We wanna go ahead and remove this plastic plate. So just get a pry tool. I'm trying to do this one-handed here. Get it behind there and pop that plate out of there like that. Same thing here on the passenger side. All right, so we can now take the top plate that looks like this or the top bracket that looks like this. You can see it has a slotted section here and a slotted section here. Now you can also see it's square, but the one corner has this raised lip. That's that spot. We're gonna put it in the truck like this. 
So that spot is going to be facing the front and in, into the inside of underneath the truck. Okay, so we're on the driver's side of the truck right now, holding it like this. It's going to go in like this. We're going to put two of the longer five millimeter head button screws. They're going to go through this two, the slotted areas up top. All right. So, and then we're going to screw into up underneath here where we remove the bump stop. Those two holes are what we're going to be screwing into. All right. So again, you can see how it's oriented. It's going to go in the truck like this. Again, we're on the driver's side. I'm going to be in the way here for a second. Let me just get these two screws started here. You do not want to tighten these down right now. Just loosely attach them. Whoops. So just loosely get them started. And we'll go over to the passenger side, do the same thing over there. So you want your bracket to be able to slide at this point right now. All right. All right, so here on the passenger side, again, that raised area is facing the front of the truck and it's gonna go inside to facing the inside of the truck. Same thing, we're gonna take two, the last two of those longer screws up into locations where we remove the bump stop and loosely attach it. Uh, just loosely attach it for right now. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our top bracket that looks like this. Now, if you're unsure of which is the driver and passenger side, because again, that does matter, if you look down here, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but there's engravings on them. It, there, one has an L for left or driver side. The other one has an R for right or passenger side. So again, we're on the driver side of the truck. We have the one that has the L engraved in it. It's kind of small, but you can see it when you're holding it. What you want to do here is set it up on top of the bracket that we just put on there. And this hole right here where we remove the factory bump stop, hopefully you can see where I'm pointing to, you want to make sure you want to have this lined up with this. Make sure the holes are all lined up to secure it. But at the same time, you want to make sure this area is lining up with the hole from the bump stop. That's why you want to have this loose to be able to slide it back and forth as a, as a, a single unit. Make sure everything lines up. When you have it all lined up here, just double checking the holes like so. Slide it just a little bit. So now we, what we can do is we can go ahead and take the top bracket back off. Just make sure that didn't move on you. And now we can go up underneath and tighten these two bolts. I'll put the torque spec on the screen. I wanna say this is 18 foot pounds of torque, but I'll double check that for you and put the correct torque on the screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat the process on the passenger side, I'm not gonna show it, it's the same exact thing. Repeat it on the passenger side and we'll move on. Next, we wanna come in and remove this 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter bolt right here that holds the emergency braking cable to the axle. Already loosened it, obviously. So remove that on the driver's side. And then same thing on the passenger side. All right, so we're now ready to put the bag in the truck. Again, we are on the driver's side, so we're just gonna take it, make sure it's lined up properly. This notch on the top bracket is inside and facing the front of the vehicle. So just kind of wiggle it in here. Just being careful of your brake lines. And again, if you don't have enough room to do this, this is where you may have to lower your axle. Thankfully, we can squeeze mine in here. Hopefully I'm not in the way here. And then we're just simply going to line up the two, the two bolts that are already on top of the spring, or I'm sorry, the bag, I keep saying spring. We're gonna go ahead and pop them up through the two locations that it lines up with. Again, just be careful, watch your cables. And then we're gonna take our top plate and actually, let me see, it might be easier if you put that top plate on first, maybe. Sometimes you need four hands to do this, but I'm sure you can see what I'm doing, just getting everything lined up. So now you can see that everything is lined up. We have those two silver bolts sticking out the top here. So you're gonna take two of the serrated nuts that look like that and just get them started. You do not have to tighten them down just yet. Once you have those two started, you're gonna take one of the bolts that look like this. You only get two of these in your kit. And this is gonna go in that location right there. 
I'll put the torque specs on the screen. You can go ahead and tighten this one down right now. I believe it's 18 foot pounds of torque, but again, I'll put the correct number on the screen for you. Now we can go ahead and tighten down the two flange nuts that we already have started. This, these get tightened to 16 foot pounds of torque. And these are a 14 millimeter is what you're gonna need. Then we could take two more of the carriage bolts, the one inch, already put one there. I'm gonna put the fourth one right here. Same thing, tighten these down to 16 foot pounds of torque. All right, so here we are on the passenger side. We've already done the exact same thing over here. Didn't show it on camera, there's no reason to. The four serrated nuts, that is tightened down to that bolt right there, down to 18 foot pounds of torque. Now on the passenger side, the one extra step we have to do is this module that we took off. What we're gonna do is this hole on the top of the bracket of the, um, the airbag system, you're gonna mount, you're gonna take one of the factory bolts that you removed from the truck. We're gonna pop it through there. And then we're gonna take one of the new smaller flat washers and nylon locking nuts and get in the back there. And that's how we're gonna secure this module back to the truck. So just go ahead and tighten this down. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not sure if there's a torque spec on this. I'll check the book. If there is, I'll put it on the screen like I've been doing. But we're just gonna go ahead and tighten this down to secure that module. Next, we're gonna take the emergency brake line that we removed or loosened before. And the tab you can see right here that's on the back of the um, airbag system. And again, this is why the orientation is so important. You have to make sure all this stuff is going on in the correct orientation. So what we're gonna do is instead of attaching the emergency brake line back to its original spot, we're gonna go ahead and attach it to that location on the bottom bracket of the airbag. So we're gonna take the factory bolt that we removed. We're gonna go down through the bracket there. And then we're gonna take another flat washer and nylon locking nut that's supplied with the bags. These are the smaller washers and nut. And that's how we're gonna go ahead and secure the emergency brake line back to the truck. And when you're doing this, you're gonna do the same exact thing on the driver's side as well. When you're doing this, the factory bolt, you're gonna need a 12 millimeter socket. The new lock, nylon locking nut is actually a 13. So you're gonna be using a 12 up top and a 13 down below on the new nylon, nylon locking nut. So the last step before we finish up the install by securing the bottom, when you're looking at the rear of the airbag, so I have the, the camera position where you're, you're facing the front of the truck, so you're looking at the rear of the axle. This bolt right here, there's one on each side. This is your brake line. We need to undo this bolt, and then let me show you what we need to do with that. It's a 12 millimeter, so go ahead and take this off. Okay, once you have that bolt out of the way, this clamp that's holding the brake line to the truck, to the axle, what we need to do is we're actually gonna take this clamp off of the brake line and we're going to spin it, okay? We're gonna put it back on the brake line and secure it right back to the same location. Now what that's gonna do, if you notice right here, the carriage bolts on the bottom of the airbags, you don't want your brake lines touching those carriage bolts, okay? So this is basically going to pull your brake lines in just enough so those carriage bolts clear. Again, do this on both sides and you'll see that your brake lines will now clear those carriage bolts with no issues. All right, last step before we run the airlines is securing the bottom of the bags to the axle with this bracket here. Now, when you're looking at this bracket, you can see one side has a flat cutout the other side has a half circle, whatever you want to call it. The half circle is going to face the outer or face the wheel. That's going to be closest to the wheel, okay, or the outside of the truck. Now, pretty self-explanatory. All we're going to do is get the carriage bolt started down through the two holes. You're going to take the bigger flat washers that come in your kit. So you're going to go flat washer and then the bigger size nylon locking nut. I'm just going to go ahead and get both sides started and then there's a couple things you really need to kind of pay attention to when you're tightening these first off is um let me get this other side started and then we'll 
we'll finish this up. So what I was about to say is a couple things you wanna pay attention once you get both sides started. You wanna tighten each side evenly. So what, that, what I mean by that is don't tighten this one all the way up snug and then go over there and do that. Do a little bit on this side, a little bit on that side. Try to keep the number of threads um, that are sticking out below the nylon locking nut. Keep them relatively, you know, about the same. Um, so just tighten a little bit, tighten a little bit, tighten a little bit, tighten a little bit. You're gonna go to 10 foot pounds of torque on these. And the other thing you wanna make sure is your bracket, you, you don't want it cockeyed. Just try to keep it, you try to have it as level as you can get, you know, um, when, you're, when you're standing back looking at it, you don't want it, you know, this, the rear higher than the front, try to get it nice and level. And when you're tightening, make sure you have plenty of clearance with your brake line. You should, once you flip that bracket around, there should be plenty of clearance, just something to pay attention to as you're doing it. So I'm not gonna show this on camera. You know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna go back and forth and I'll give you a look when I'm done with both sides at how it should look and then we'll run the lines and wrap the video up. All right guys, there you have it. Tightened up to 10 foot pounds of torque and you can see there's roughly the same amount of threads um, sticking out down below this nut as there is in the front one. All right, I did the same thing on the passenger side. Let's run the air lines and wrap this up. All right guys, we're coming down the home stretch. All we have left to do is to mount our air hose the locations where we're gonna tap into to inflate or deflate the bags. The, this option or this these possibilities are pretty much endless. You can put these things wherever you want as long as you can safely run the line to. I found a spot that I absolutely love. Not only is it a very convenient location, but it's also very easy to run from the bags to this location right here. I think this is gonna be an awesome spot to put these things. Basically to remove this panel here, it's just four bolts one in each corner. And to do that, you need a T20 or T25. I'll double check that for you and put it on the screen. Um, but once you remove those four bolts from each corner, this will pop off. You just unplug the wiring harness um, from the back of it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill our holes, one on this side, one on this side. And that's how we're gonna pop our, um, our connections up through there. Again, very easy to access when we need to inflate or deflate the bags. Plus, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get from the bags up to this spot. So first thing we're gonna do, your, your airline comes as just one long piece with a valve on each end. Okay, so obviously we're gonna have to cut it. They do that because you don't know what length you're gonna need. So all I'm gonna do is take one end and I'm gonna feed it down through and it's actually gonna pop out down behind our rear wheel on the passenger side, obviously. So I'm just gonna feed enough of it down through so I can grab it once we get down underneath the truck. And I'm actually gonna feed it all the way through and just leave, because what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna cut the other end. So I'm gonna feed it all the way through and then I'll just kind of maybe hook this up here just to hold it up and out of the way, make sure you have enough slack. Maybe not there, tuck it up through here. And that way, you know, obviously it's gonna be mounted right here. It'll give yourself enough slack. So let's get out of the truck, drill our couple holes and I'll show you how we're gonna run these. All right, so let me show you what I'm doing. We're gonna drill our holes here. I've already did, I've already done a couple pilot holes. The final hole is gonna be 5 16 But what you wanna do, if you're gonna go this route, you wanna make sure you're off to the side like you can see right there. You don't wanna do it here in the middle because the, the valves will interfere with your cover. Um, so again, just did a couple pilot holes off to the side. Now I'm gonna go through and do my 5 16 which is the final size of the hole. All right, let's check the fitment. 5 16 are the holes and the valves fit perfectly. All right, so let's run our lines, how we're gonna run and we'll make our final connections. So we're gonna hook up the passenger side first. When you feed the air line down through that hole, once you remove the panel with the plug in it, it's gonna pop out right behind here. You can't miss it. There's a huge gap right there. Um, it's gonna come right down to the ground. If it doesn't, you can very easily reach up and grab it. So just bring it over to your airbag. Now you wanna make sure you do have a little bit of slack. Leave yourself, I don't know, maybe three or four inches of slack up in the truck bed um, because when you hook it up to that panel, you have to remember if you ever wanna pull that panel off, you're gonna need a little slack behind it to pull the panel. All right, so I have a little, I made sure I had a little slack in the bed. I'm just gonna feed this along the frame right here and measure out how much I need. So I'm gonna cut it right about here. 
Now, when you're cutting an airline, let me get the camera a little bit closer because this is very important as well so you don't get any leaks. All right, so when you're cutting airline, no matter what you're doing with it, it's very important to get a nice, clean, square cut. You don't want it to be angled at all. I highly recommend picking up a set of these if you don't have them. They're super cheap. You can get them on Amazon or anywhere for that matter, any hardware store or whatever. Um, I get mine off Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. But they, this basically ensures you get a nice clean cut straight down so you're not, you don't have any jagged edges or um, any crooked lines. That's very important. If you do, If you don't get a clean cut, you may end up with leaks. So all we're going to do is pop the air line in the tool like this and i have my cut line right there i know where it is on the the tube there and we're simply just going to push straight down so as you can see it makes sure you have a nice clean square cut you can see right there that it's not crooked or jagged or anything like that um, again very important to make sure you don't get any leaks All right, so we have our first cut right there. All I'm going to do is take the remainder of the hose. I'm going to go back up into the bed. I'm going to feed it down through the same way, and you're going to watch it. You'll be able to see it come down in this area here. Before we make our final connection to the bags, I'll give you an idea of how it's going to look. You can see that side is already connected. Basically, in order to make your connections, here's the one that's going to go over to the driver's side. What you're going to do is you're going to take one of the nuts that come in the package. Screw it down on there. Don't have to go all the way. They're adjustable, obviously, if you want your nozzle to be in or in um, higher or lower. I'll show you what I mean by that. So one of the nuts, then you're going to take your star washer, put that down on there. Then we're going to come up through, hopefully I'm on frame here. I'm trying to do this without hitting a camera or anything. Go up through the hole there flip it over then we're going to take the rubber washer once the rubber washer is on another flat washer and then finally another nut and basically what we're going to do is get that started there so you can adjust it which i mean this is obvious but since you have the nut on the top and underneath you can adjust it if you want more of this sticking up higher or lower so i'm actually going to take my cap off the other side and i'm just going to get them to match and then i'll show you the finished product this is going to be a 13 millimeter that you're going to need to tighten these down once you get it where you want it all right so once you have both of them tightened down and they're just about even i have it upside down right now so you, the lighting is a little bit better but you could even flip it over i actually counted the threads on both of them so i know they're literally just about dead on um so now all we can do is we're going to tuck this back in. I'm not going to screw it back in place yet because we are going to want to check for um, leaks. But now that this is connected, I'm just going to kind of set this right here for right now and just loosely attach one of the bolts. So now we can go down underneath and run the lines to the bags, make sure we have enough slack and cut off any excess. All that's left to do is connect to the bag. So here's the shorter line coming down. From You can see both of them coming over here. So all we're going to do Again, nice 90 degree cut on there. We're just going to take it and pop it right down onto the fitting on top of the bag. And you'll you'll feel it. You want to push down until you feel it kind of lock in place. You'll feel like a little, almost like a little bump um, when it when it locks down in there. All right, so that's locked in. Now the driver side, you can see what I did here. It's coming down and we're in a zip tie, of course, but I ran it right Let me grab the camera real quick, see if you can maybe get a better look. But you can see there's an opening right here underneath the bed. If you run it straight across that, that actually goes all the way over to the driver's side, pops out right above the airbag. It's perfect. So we'll go over there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And uh, we're just about done. All right, so you can see where it pops out right on the other side of this channel underneath the bed. So all we're going to do, again, just make sure you leave, leave yourself a little bit of slack in there. There's nothing in there. It's not going to get in the way of anything moving, anything hot. It's a perfect spot to run this, this airline. So we're just going to measure it up, make sure we have a little bit of slack in there. And using our airline cutters, make our cut. Perfect 90 degree. Just going to pop it down in the fitting. Again, push it down 
until you feel it click into place. And then give it a nice little tug just to make sure it's in there good. We're gonna check for leaks, of course. But let's go back and zip tie and wrap it up. All right, let's check for leaks and wrap this up. So we're gonna blow the bags up to anywhere between 40 and 60 PSI is what the instructions call for. So I know this is my driver side, that's my passenger side. You may wanna just, you know, when you're installing this, keep an eye on that just so you know. I'm gonna blow them both up to about 45 or 50 and we'll grab our soapy water and check for leaks. All right, both bags are up to 50 PSI. All you're gonna do is take a little soapy water mix. I've already sprayed this side, you can see. What you're looking for, you wanna spray that connection. And if you see any bubbles forming, even little tiny bubbles, that's a sign that you have an air leak, something went wrong, either you didn't make that cut clean or something is wrong with the hose at that connection. Driver side is obviously good. Let's go check the passenger and we're all done. Man, what a difference these bags make. I only have them at about 15 PSI right now on both sides and you can see it virtually eliminated all of the squat. I'll put a picture on the screen just to kind of remind you of how it was sitting before these bags. And again, right now I only have them at 15 PSI. I can go much, much higher if I wanted to and raise that back end up even more. But 15 PSI, I've already taken it for a little ride. It still feels really good. It stiffens just a touch when you're, when you're running them around there, but it's not bad at all. It's still a nice smooth ride. And again, as you can see, the squat is just about gone. Um, only at 15 PSI. We'll give you an up close look. Obviously the truck, there's nothing in the bed. Um, the picture I put on the screen, it's the same situation. Nothing in the bed, hooked up to the boat right here in my driveway, just about in the same location. The other thing I like when you have the 35s on here, you can't really see much of anything in there. You can see the airline sticking out of where we ran it, but that's about it. You can't see the bags at all. I'll take you around the, the passenger side and give you a look over there. You can see where I zip tied them as well. The airlines that is. So you can see, you know, with these 35s on, you can't even see, you know, the top of the brackets at all. All you can see are the airlines. And perfect spot to zip tie to, right up there to the existing wiring here on the passenger side. But yeah, I couldn't be happier. Stay tuned for the wireless um, air compressor install. We didn't do that yet, but that video will be coming out in the very near future. Probably I'd say maybe two or three days after this video. Um, but yeah, highly recommend these bags. 15 PSI virtually eliminates the squat with the nitro hooked up, but yet ride quality is still pretty darn good in my opinion. So. Any questions, put them down below, guys. Appreciate you watching. As always, take care. We'll see you on the next one.